Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. And this video will be kind of wrapping up the mini series I've been doing of an offseason plan for the Giants. So before I say anything else, I want to ask everybody that's watching this video to please watch the other three parts that are in this mini series. Um, the first one is us clearing up $40 million in cap space like Joe Shane said he wanted to do. I took a stab at it in that video, but at the end of the day, we ended up using what in my opinion was a better method by Patricia Traina over at Sports Illustrated. Then in that next video, using the money that we just cleared, we try and see who are some legitimate and sensible free agent targets for the New York Giants. I think I only got around two like two exact players that i wanted and then for a third one it was kind of left open to a couple of affordable guys at that position um the three positions involved were cornerback defensive tackle and center i got a defensive tackle and a center that i really trust and that i believe that you know those should be the exact guys we target and then for the cornerback it was a little bit left open because the one guy i wanted may or may not be expecting a payday we'll get into that in a little bit and the third video, which came out last night, was actually the mock draft. It directly ties into the other two. That mock draft, of course, in my opinion, is probably the most important one of them all because of the giant situation with cap space. It's going to be how we're going to be bringing in most of our players this offseason. Also, in general, you know, in my opinion, it's better to just build through the draft than to build through free agency. Not saying that you can't build through free agency, but I think you should get your core players from the draft. Then, obviously what i targeted in the draft was the opposite of what i targeted in free agency filling in what i could not attack in that free agent market and then in this video it's kind of a little bit of a recap of all that showing you from top to bottom the off-season moves i guess you could call it the entire off-season plan and what the new team would look like at the end of the day with, with quotation marks around new right so let's start from the beginning right with that patricia trainer plan we ended up cutting three main players, and then there was restructures. The restructures were to Leonard Williams, uh, Kenny Galladay, and Blake Martinez. And the players cut were James Bradbury, uh, Kyle Rudolph, and Riley Dixon. And then, of course, Nate Solder walked. His contract is already off the books as of yesterday or, or the day before or something like that. Uh, James Bradbury is, of course, the biggest hit. And um, with his play gone from the secondary, I, I think it really does heavily affect how that secondary can perform unless we could bring in somebody um that that's just a really good number two corner or something like that to play alongside of dory jackson i think we could survive without him if we supplement the missing play well if we don't it is really gonna suffer uh a part of a dory jackson's success in my opinion was because he was playing across from james bradbury and but that's neither here nor there james bradbury being gone it's kind of a done deal almost at this point um unless of course and i've been saying this in all the videos unless of course there's a massive some sort of restructure where you're putting off like 90 percent of his money to the next year or the year after like that in his contract but if they want to free up 40 million dollars if joe shane our new general manager wants to do that bradbury is almost certainly going to be gone riley dixon's replacement may already be on the roster with jamie gillian the uh punter that we signed a couple days ago or was it a couple weeks ago and Nate Solder, nobody's really worried about my guy there in Nate Solder. So now let's look at the players that we let walk before I get to the free agents. Because we had a, the Giants themselves on their roster had a lot of players that were going to become free agents this uh, this offseason. And, and there's a lot. Uh, I'm going to try and read out all of them. Uh, Evan Ingram, Will Hernandez, Nate Ebner, Lorenzo Carter, Mike Glennon, Corey Cunningham, CJ Board, Jabril Peppers, Dante Pettis, Billy Price, Reggie Raglan, Danny Shelton, Jalen Smith, Levine Toyolo. These are all players that I let walk from the Giants. I think, you know, there's a couple of really big ones that catch your eye immediately. Ingram, Hernandez, uh, Carter, and Peppers. For those four guys, I will say something that is consistent throughout the entire Dave Gellman regime, and that was the Giants never traded players when they had a chance to trade players, and we ended up just letting them walk for nothing. We get nothing in return. It really does irk me, and it irks a lot of Giants fans with good you know reason we could have gotten something back for these guys we never know i would i would have rather taken like a six round pick for one of them or a fifth round pick for one of them than just letting them walk and sign with another team for free essentially um there is one guy i could see us really bringing back and that is lorenzo carter because of his end of the season performance that last month of the season he kind of came on a lot and 
had a lot of pressures, had a good amount of sacks. He looked as if he was back to the Lorenzo Carter he was in early 2020 before he went down with the Achilles injury, which does beg the question, is that exactly what happened? Has it just been enough time? And, you know, he at that point of the 2021 season, he was fully recovered from that 2020 Achilles injury. Or was he just trying to show out a little bit for a contract? Either way, I could see the Giants probably giving him some cheap to bring him back. And if it is cheap, I wouldn't mind it at all. But I think I think he's gone, to be honest with you. Um, and then Jabril Peppers is another name um, that people have brought up and said that he they could see him being brought back as well. And I personally don't see it. Obviously, I could see how he will be used in a Wink Martindale type defense. But I don't know if we just got the money to bring Peppers back. It's not like he's going to be commanding a lot of money, but he's going to be commanding a good amount of money that we just don't have. Which brings me directly to the cap space that we freed up. With that uh, plan, we got around $46 million in cap space. But of that 46, what we could actually use, you know, because of dead cap and whatnot, it's around $23 million. And of that 23, what we could use in free agency would be around 13 to $14 million because you want to leave 9 to 10 to sign your drafted players in the NFL draft. You know, it's just an average, just an estimate, not an exact number. So the Giants would have around 13 to 14 in this scenario to use in free agency, which is not a lot. Uh, the first guy we went and got back was Austin Johnson because our defensive line does need uh, to keep its players at this point. Dave Gellman did a spectacular job of building it up and did just a spectacular job of just destroying it. You know, there's no more Dalvin Thompson. There's no more BJ Hill, no more RJ McIntosh. We don't really have a deep you know defensive line where you could rotate a lot of guys so i want to keep one of the players that really surprised and impressed me this year and that was austin johnson and i think he makes a good tandem with williams and lawrence on both sides of him you bring back elijah penny as well really good fullback for the giants keon crossing good depth piece for the uh cornerback room bernardrick mckenney um another player kind of like austin johnson that just surprised and impressed me towards the middle of the season almost came out of nowhere he played middle linebacker for us John Ross, because I think he was really underused, and at least in 2021, he overcame his two major problems. John Ross wasn't really injured that much, one, and two, whenever we threw him the ball, he came down with it. That catching problem seemed to be gone. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, it was just a thing of both the Jason Garrett and Freddie Kitchen system that we never used that man downfield. Think about it. Anytime we tossed it to him downfield, he came down with it. He was a reliable target, so I do want him back in this wide receiving room. And then Matt Skura for offensive line depth. You could replace Skura with Billy Price if you want. I just want to bring back somebody purely for the depth of the offensive line. Then you get to the free agents. Uh, Ted Karras from the New England Patriots. He started both at their left guard and center for them. I think he could be our starting center for at least this year and the year moving forward. He was like more than good enough for Mac Jones and Bill Belichick. And this is not a Nate Solder situation. It, it really isn't. We're not paying this man a lot of money. Solder was already kind of teetering at the, the end of his tenure in New England. This man, Karras, was still good in New England. And he was signed on kind of a prove-it deal with them. So, it, you know, I don't know. If he wants to take a chance with the Giants and the Giants make him a good offer, I think he was on a around a $2 million, It was either like a $1.75 million deal for one year with New England. We give him like a two, maybe $2.25 million deal. If that's enough to sweeten the deal for him, he comes over here. Nice cheap option that I think would be uh, really good on this line, especially with when you see what I surround him with. And then for the cornerback that I really want to get is Levi Wallace from the Buffalo Bills. This man, Levi Wallace, I can't state how much I, I just love the way he plays. He is also somebody else that's been signing a lot of cheap deals. He's in fact signed four straight one year 1.75 million dollar deals with the buffalo bills and he's outperformed that deal every single year he's been called upon as their number three starting corner and even at points as their number two starting corner right next to tredavious white and you got to remember the bills are one of the best secondaries in the league and it, he is part of why they are one of the best secondaries in the entire league we got a connection with joe shane work some magic if we could get him that would be nice i will say he probably is expecting a payday at this point after you know continuously outperforming those really really cheap contracts so if he expects a payday then i don't see us getting him because we just don't have the money to do that and if he expects a payday i'm gonna try and get somebody like jimmy smith from the baltimore ravens who's an unrestricted free agent smith has played in wink's defense obviously he knows wink hopefully wink can get him over 
and and he's a good starting corner he's a good veteran presence to have in that locker room as well if you can't get him Justin Coleman of Miami is another dude I'm looking at there's even Sidney Jones he has experience in the NFC East these are all quality starting cornerbacks not number one guys but out of that not that but they're number two or number three guys and I think they will be nice next to Adoree Jackson and then we get to the draft and with the draft a very quick recap you know, it was a whole 35 minute mock draft video. Definitely check it out if you haven't. But here's a very quick recap of the players we got Aki McQuanu, George Karloftis, Zion Johnson, Chad Muma, Jamari Salyer, Jalen Tolbert, Jake Ferguson, Jerome Ford, Tariq Carpenter. And I'm just going to go straight to what the new team looks like, starting with the offensive line, because I think it, without a doubt, it is the most overhauled. Uh, unit of the entire team if that's you know if that's the term I should use because the starting offensive line now looks like Andrew Thomas at left tackle Zion Johnson at left guard Ted Karras at center Jamari Salyer at right guard Ikeem Ikwanu at right tackle it's a very young one but in my opinion that's a monster offensive line and a complete turnaround from the previous year the previous two years whatever you want to call it and you got depth pieces like Matt Pert Shane Lemieux Matt Skura or Billy Price whoever you decide to bring back and Nick Gates whenever he comes back maybe we could even get another undrafted guy on the cheap to be the depth there but I think this is a legit good offensive line once again it's young but if we could develop and, and it's not even young in a sense like 2020 was young a lot of these players that we got through the draft were a lot more proven than the guys that we got in 2020 Shane Lemieux and Matt Pert were both very develop developmental players. Zion Johnson is regarded as the second or third best inside lineman in this class, not developmental plug and play. Jamari Salyer, even though I got him in the third round, is a guy that played tackle at college. But, you know, because of several things I said in the mock draft video, he's probably going to play guard at the NFL level, was very successful in college as well. And then, of course, Akeem Kwanu is, is like either the first, second or third best tackle in this class, wherever you want to rank him. There is a lot of proven talent here. You go to the tight end room, which is also very overturned um, and now is has only two players, which I guess could be a weakness and probably the weak link of my entire team right here in my entire offseason plan because I only have two tight ends and they are Jake Ferguson, the rookie and Caden Smith, a guy that's been, you know, a perennial third string tight end basically his entire career. Wide receivers, Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Tony, John Ross as your top three, followed by Jalen Tolbert, the rookie that we drafted, Darius Slayton. And Austin Pro, Austin Pro, we just signed. Running backs, you got Saquon Barkley, Jerome Ford, the rookie, Elijah Penny. Quarterbacks, Daniel Jones and Davis Webb. And uh, yeah, I will admit that's probably another weak link, the um, backup quarterback position, because how much better is Davis Webb than Mike Clennon? I would probably like to get somebody better in there. Amen. If Colt McCoy wants to come back, I love Colt McCoy as my backup quarterback, and so did most Giants fans. Edge defenders, ooh, I really like in this edge room because you have Aziz Ojolari on one side and George Karloftis on the other side. Once again, I get into it more about how much I love the, the complementary defense that those two would give us. But that's a nice starting two, young starting two. But that, those guys would be threats to the quarterbacks off the edge, man. Then you got them followed up by Quincy Roche, O'Shane Zimenez, Ellerson Smith, who we haven't seen much of last year, um, and people... We're really excited about him. So maybe this year he comes on. Cam Brown, Trent Harris, who is super underrated player. Um, and I think we should keep him in the rotation. Inside linebackers, you got Blake Martinez. Not sure when he exactly he would be clear to see uh game time because he's ACL. But you got Chad Mumba behind him, who I think has the potential to be a starting middle linebacker. A um, Mike linebacker, I mean the league. He is gonna be a plug and play starter, but he could replace Martinez if we need him be. Tay Crowder, who has shown that he could be a number two guy as a middle linebacker. Bernardrick McKinney, I talked about him earlier. Then Carter Coughlin and TJ Brunson. Defensive line, you have Leo, Dex, Austin Johnson. I like that starting three. Followed up by Raymond Johnson, Nico Lalos, and David Moa. At cornerback, you'll have Adori. Your choice of the free agent corner. Uh, the best case scenario is that we get Levi Wallace for some reason if he doesn't get that big payday. Uh, Darnay Holmes, Rodarius Williams, Aaron Robinson, Keon Crossan. At safety, you got the X, Weapon X, Xavier McKinney. Oh, man, that, I, I feel like we're all excited about McKinney, right? This man could be something great at the NFL if he continues to play the way he does. And I hope it wasn't just kind of a blip in the graph, so to speak, and that he really is going to be somebody that could be used all over the field. A ball hawk and a great tackler, man. Uh, Logan Ryan, 
Julian Love, Tariq Carpenter, a rookie, and Steven Parker. And then at kicker and punter, you got Graham Gano. We keep Graham, the godfather Gano, with his brilliant leg, and Jamie Gillian, the punter that we just signed. Now, looking at it from a big scale, once again, the offensive line is the biggest turnaround along with the tight end room and the guys that are starting at edge. Um, so, I mean, obviously, in the, you know, James Bradbury being gone, but, but for the most part, it is a very similar team to last year without a doubt. We let go of a lot of players. Um, there's a lot of depth pieces that shifted around here. And I think this would be for the better of the team. Um, if this is how they go, you definitely put a mark on it as a new regime, especially with that line saying that we are taking it seriously and we're going to try our best to fix it. But I want to see what you guys think. So put your thoughts down below. What do you think of this entire offseason plan? It is just one of many ways we can go. It is just one of many ways one person can come up with. And I am a fan at the end of the day, just trying to take a stab at it. So put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, where would you have targeted a bit more? Uh, like I said, I think the, the weak link here, backup quarterback, tight end room probably is the weak link. Uh, who would you have gotten instead? And things like that. Put your comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.